Let's talk women talk. Hi, I'm Shelley. Today I'm going to talk about the eight steps to asking for a flexible work arrangement. So you first start off with knowing exactly why you're asking for a flexible work arrangement. Secondly is to really think through, does the job that you do uh, allow for it to be converted into a flexible work arrangement? It's very important to think through how much time needs to be on the job, how much time can be done away from your workplace for example. And then thirdly, it's very important that you are able to break down your job duties. Ask yourself, which part of the job can you do from home? Which part of the job can you do uh, in work? At the end of the day, you do your job on a day-to-day -day basis. No one else knows it better than you do. So if you are able to break, segment your job into different different um, uh, areas of where it can fit nicely into a flexible work arrangement, then you have a much stronger case when you're actually asking for it. The fourth important point, which is very often neglected, is think about the communication part of, of what's going to happen. So it's very important that you think through, okay, you know, I'm going to be uh, looking at, uh, say for example, work from home, uh, then how do my colleagues contact me? How do they write to me? How do they reach me uh, in case of an emergency? So the communication schedule, you should actually try to plan it out. The fifth point is to identify what are some of the possible impact that your flexible work arrangement will have on your colleagues and your clients. Who are all the different stakeholders that are going to be involved? What is your impact on them? And what you can do to minimise the impact? And then number six is to have what we call a trial period. We recommend anything from six to ten weeks. Be very aware that any kind of challenges that surfaces, not just for you, but for your colleagues, for your clients, for your bosses, for the other departments that get involved, any kind of challenges should be surfaced and tried to be dealt with. And I think having a trial period also kind of assures everybody that if it doesn't work, it's all right. We, we can always go back to status quo. So number seven is what we call being flexible about your plan. I think what's interesting about flexible work arrangement is there needs to be structure, but at the same time also be aware that because it's flexible, you play by ear. There will be times where you are needed more than what you agreed on or you're, you may need more flexibility than what you asked for. A lot of times when women fail to get a flexible work arrangement is they literally walk into the office, they tell the boss, I want to work from home. But there's no plan, there's no design of the schedule, there's no explanation how the job duty changes. These are things that for the hiring manager, it's a pressing concern. Tell me what you need change, tell me how do I help to ensure that your transition does not affect the movement of, of the car, or in this case, does not affect the business needs or the team needs, then I'll buy into it. It's really about planning it through um, showing how we will minimise the disruption to what's currently existing. That's when I think there's a much stronger success. Yeah.